Today we're exploring seven of the best dead games from the past 25 years. Look, he's shooting where he's not even aiming. His trigger bar is just automatically, like, shooting. Most of them are still hanging on to their smaller communities, but some are actually about to shut down forever. There was an announcement in the news section about the upcoming closure of Dreadhunger's official servers. I've spent days going through the hundreds of suggestions that you guys have sent to me, and these seven games were by far the most requested, and that's for very good reason. Fistful of Frags was initially released as a mod in 2007, and then as a standalone game in 2014. Like a lot of older Source mods, the theme was a big selling point, and for Fistful of Frags, I was told it was inspired by both Spaghetti Westerns and, possibly, the first two Call of Juarez games. After 2014, the player count stayed roughly above 500 for a good few years, but recently the number has started to drop below 80, and when I logged on, the only server with population had four players. Uh, four out of 16 people. That's not too bad. Instead of classes, this game has guns, and a lot of them. And out of all of them, I somehow pulled my weight using the bow, which is definitely not the greatest weapon. Oh my f god, peek me. Thank you. And in the second server, I discovered another combat mechanic. Kicking. Aha. Alongside kicking, you can also disarm people with brass knuckles, ride horses inside houses, drown in centimeter deeper water, and use whiskey to heal yourself. Horse? No f Did you just try kick me? After a while, the four-player lobby I joined turned into ten people, so I joined a different server with one other fella to see what he was up to. Alright, I'm joining the server with one other person. Oh, Lukash is practicing against some bots, I see. We're friends, we're friends, we're friends. Lukash and I, for about 20 minutes, played against a lobby full of bots, and I think I was honestly annoying him more than anything, because he aired every single one of my messages in chat, and then eventually left the server. So that's what I did. I left the server to go back to the main server, this time on a map in the middle of the f***ing Alps. By now, I would discovered a couple more weapons, but... The revolver wasn't doing much for me, and I honestly stank up the whole game. In the process of looking into Fistful of Frags, I managed to actually speak to some of the community members, who told me about some of the traditions, like the group of players called Zoros. Zoros were a group of one to three active players at any time that abided by a strict set of rules, which included typing Z after every one of their kills. Once a Zoros retired or moved on, they'd pass on the mantle to someone else, who would then carry on their legacy. And the guy I spoke to was actually one of the last Zoros who told me that whole era is long over. I thought it was pretty cool that such a small group can have such a profound impact and actually become pretty famous inside this small internet community. I should also say that while the Zoros were eventually a number of different players, it all started with just one fella who called himself Zoro. While making this video, I actually found a comment on a YouTube video where the original Zorro, Jack Clock, explained how he only started using a keybind for typing Z after 2016 and a couple other things, like his retirement. But Zorro's aside, apparently even a 2014 game has its issues with one of the most notorious problems in the whole world of gaming. Hacking. Hogged is also very good, I think. Okay, I just checked his profile to see how many hours he has, and he has a... He has a VAC ban with zero days since last ban. So he was VAC banned today. The last game was on a flatter, more open, classic cowboy map, FOF underscore Depot. And I didn't actually notice, but in the last game, a guy called Hawked topped the leaderboard, with over 527 points, and started to do the same in the second game as well. But when I went around this corner, and the f pre-fired me into the void, I decided to actually spectate him. 
Oh my. He pre-fired me, didn't he? <laughs> I swear to God, he pre-fired me. In, and it's it's the, it's that hawked guy. Listen, I'm not, I'm not saying he's cheating, but... Is he cheating? Okay, he's cheating. Look, he's shooting where he's not even aiming. His trigger bot is just automatically, like, shooting. Turns out this guy was shooting in directions that weren't even visible on his monitor. And then after he'd miss about 30 shots, he'd then die to someone's fists or a horse. Oh my... This is incredible. I think I got really unlucky because as far as I know, this is not a common problem. And either way, the admin was on top of it and we both kind of laughed at how shit his hacks were. But after he got himself banned, I looked through his profile and discovered something pretty strange. <laughs> he just got shit on again. Wait, no. Oh, we got banned. Oh shit. <laughs> This hogged guy has screenshots on his profile from him being banned in, like, every game possible. Banned in Apex Legends. Banned in whatever the f*** that game is. Destiny 2? Banned in Albion? Banned in PUBG? He's also banned in in Veiled Experts, and of course CS2, and Overwatch 2, and Dota 2, and he's even gone so far back as to get banned in H1Z1. Is that- oh my f god, he is banned in Ricochet, the Valve game that came out in 2000. Going through these dead games, I found a lot of interesting Steam profiles, but I think that one might genuinely top the list. Either way, the Fistful of Frags community is definitely pretty tight, but nowhere near small enough to be called dead, and if it wasn't recommended so much, I probably wouldn't have tried it out, but I'm definitely glad I did. Before we carry on, I want to quickly thank today's sponsor, War Thunder. War Thunder is by far the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Not only are the vehicles insanely detailed down to their individual parts with the ability to customize them, but the amount of dynamic PvP fights you can have with over 2,000 different tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships is personally my favorite part. And in case you're wondering, any of these vehicles are completely operable using just a mouse, meaning no other hardware is necessary. Play War Thunder now for free on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, and for a limited time, new players and players with over six months of inactivity can claim a large bonus pack, including multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, and much more using my link below. For the last few months, I've been trying to cover every single iconic war game from as far back as the early 2000s. But there's two I haven't touched yet, and that's Verdun and Tannenberg. Verdun is the slightly older game with a larger community, but I started with Tannenberg, where there was a lobby of about 40 people. This was, obviously, peak hours for Tannenberg, but a lot of the players were actually pretty new to the game, and that's probably because of the recent sale. Hold on, how have I just killed someone with that? How the f*** did I just kill somebody? Okay, fuck Max. On the forest map, I actually did okay with 22 kills and only 7 deaths. And then on the snow map, I left after about 10 minutes of being bitched around by bots and people head glitching from half a mile away. Although Tannenberg and Verdun are technically two different games, the biggest difference are the visuals and the types of people in the community. Oh no. Oh no, we have an issue. Who is shooting? Oh! Okay, there's there's a fuck ton of them. My teammate is dead. There he goes. For example, when Tannenberg first came out, a lot of the regulars on Verdun were kind of confused as to why it wasn't just a DLC for Verdun instead of a whole new game. There's definitely some crossover in terms of player base, but for the most part, Verdun players stick to Verdun and Tannenberg players stick to that game. By who? By who? Genuinely by who? By who? Who just killed me? And the Verdun players tend to be a whole lot better. Often when I was playing Verdun, there would be a few fellas just jumping across the entire map, whipping out a pistol, taking out your whole squad. Did he just dive across my... Pemo has to be like a pro or something. 
He's jumping around, diving, sliding. How do you even do that? One of the good players in this lobby, one of the players who was jumping around, killing my entire squad every single second, went by the name of Permo. And I think at some point the guy had a KD of around 12, and at least half his f kills were on me. Oh my god! What the f did I just see? When I was asking for info on Verdun and Tannenberg, I was warned that Verdun's community is pretty talented, and as a new player, it's kind of harder to keep up. According to a regular player called Volfa, a lot of the older players tend to play it a bit like Counter-Strike, with stress resolution, settings on ultra low, and probably a monitor around 2 inches from their face. But it's been like that for a while on Verdun. Back in 2016, the game was heavily focused on competitive play, and even had some events organised for it. But that didn't last very long, as the developers were more focused on the casual aspect. With this new focus, the developers also introduced a bunch of controversial changes, like adding AI bots, the 64 player mode instead of the original 32 player mode, and some various sound changes. I spoke to some older players that all said this was the turning point. And it's hardly rare to see a game slowly lose loyal players because the developers had other ideas to cater to more casual players. I really want to thank all the people of Verdun and Tannenberg that helped me find out more about the game and its history, and of course, Permo, for absolutely humbling me. Dread Hunger is a social deduction game based in the Arctic, with a lifespan of barely over a year. Yet in January, the servers are going to be shutting down forever. There was an announcement in the news section about the upcoming closure of Dread Hunger's official servers. The player count wouldn't really indicate this, especially since there's usually over 1,500 players online at most times. But the truth is, this game fell flat pretty much everywhere in the world but Asia. I always knew it was probably going to happen. They gave me a bit of a heads up that I probably should take my channel in another direction eventually. I just never did. And honestly, I, I tr I've tried. I've tried to post other videos, stuff that I also enjoy, and the problem is, is that I don't enjoy it as much as Dreadhunger. This is Plummo. Plummo is one of the most active Dreadhunger content creators. He's been streaming it over on his Twitch and uploading highlights to his YouTube for well over two years. For him, and a lot of others, the news of Dread Hunger coming to a close is scary. It means people will have to change their content, and most importantly, these people lose a game they loved. Plomo's goodbye video really shows how much some people care for Dread Hunger, so I definitely suggest you check it out and maybe give him some support in the comments. If you have any ideas for where I could take this channel, please throw them in. I'm looking for new social deception games. I am now officially on the market Plummo is now officially on the market for social deception games. I need, a, I need a replacement. I need a new game that I can learn to love. Maybe not as much, but maybe somewhere near as much as I did Dreadhunter. Oh my god, finally. I'm actually in a game. Just don't speak and they won't ask you questions. Yeah. When I actually played Dread Hunger myself, I spent a long while searching for lobbies and eventually started joining Asian lobbies, because the only EU lobby on the entire game had three AFK people and later on just shut down. For a while, I was bouncing around lobbies, praying the next one doesn't fill up before I join or that I don't get kicked. Turns out, when you have a clearly English name, you're more than likely to be kicked. Over and over again. Oh. Okay, in the next game, I'm just gonna be honest. Either that, or they somehow knew I didn't have a clue how the game worked. However, after exactly 32 minutes of being repeatedly kicked, I found a lobby. And I think the only reason I didn't get kicked again was because this one kid vouched for me. Or something like that. Why am I squaring up to nothing but air? Can I play? There's so much going on, I don't know what to do. I think they like me. Uh, England, United Kingdom. Yes. Hello, friendly, friends. Yes. 
Obviously, I don't know exactly what they were saying, but I can only imagine it was purely nice things. <laughs> of course. Once our boat hit land, we all left and eventually split into groups. I went with the kid and this other guy who, for some reason, then killed me, put me in a bed, and then left me there. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hello. Hey. No, no. <sighs> Why is the kid the only one helping me? I really thought I was about to be kicked, but they then gave me a bunch of stuff, and I just followed them around for a while, exploring. I, I, I really, I don't know what to do. <laughs> See. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. What? What do I do? Uh, kill. Uh, kill us. Kill us. Kill our. Kill us. Kill you. Okay. Kill our. <laughs> no, 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 no. By the time this guy finally handed me an axe, I had started to learn a bit more about what was going on. And essentially, this was a realistic Among Us, where you either work to escape the Arctic, or you work to not let anyone escape the Arctic. Let's go. Okay, let's go. See? The most helpful guy in the whole lobby is a kid. <laughs> yes, sir. What's your name? Uh, my name is Rai. My name is uh, Jeff. Your name is Jeff? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Hello, Jeff. Ni hao. I still didn't really know what side I was on, but they seemed to trust me, and I wasn't exactly smart enough to make any kind of moves. After we made it back to the boat, I went AFK to get my fat ass some food. When I came back, I somehow made my way into the jail and some pretty angry sounding fella beat me down with a sword until I died. Hello! Hello guys! Fuck you! <gasps> no! Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> this is probably up there with one of the weirdest experiences I've had in any game, ever. But I appreciate the couple guys that took me under their wing and actually revived me when they killed me. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Dread Hunger community servers will probably live on for a while, and in case you're wondering, the developers did answer a few questions as to why it's shutting down, and the answer was a combination of frequent DDoS attacks, heavy server costs, and obviously, a lack of players in some certain regions. Over on Twitter, where my DMs are full of suggestions from you, almost every other request is for a game called Spiral Knights. This game released in 2011, has over 19,000 positive reviews, yet less than 20 players online at most hours. Spiral Knights is an MMORPG set in an alien-like world with a pretty long and passionate history. But in the past few years, the game has seen a lot of its regulars slowly leave, and half the Reddit is just nostalgia posts about the old days. Since I was obviously new, I wanted to play the first couple missions, including the Ancient Generator. That's a real human. What's his name? Can you hear me? No, it's a random typing, no? Hello? Hello? Uh. Someone joined my lobby at the start, but that didn't last very long. Oh, we're finished. Well, that was, uh... Easy. I played a few more missions solo and then eventually gained access to the main hub, 
This was pretty much where everyone in the entire game was sat, AFK. And at some point a random event started called the Colosseum and I thought it would be a pretty good idea to join it and, you know, maybe get some loot. Ain't no way bro hopped on a proto sword. Heal up. Nope. He just hit me down at 24 f***ing HP in one hit. That is disgusting. I f***ing love how everyone's just sympathetic and they don't even want to kill me. Never mind. This was a team battle alongside people who actually play the game and have very good items and armor, for which they probably grinded hours for. Considering my account was about 30 minutes old, the fight didn't go too well, but it gave me a taste of what the community was like, and instead of shitting on me for being a dumbass with beginner items, they actually tried to just avoid killing me, almost like they were ignoring me. But that doesn't mean I didn't die a couple times. What if I just block the whole time? Because surely they can't go through my sh How strong is he that he can literally just f***ing ignore me? None of them care that I'm here. Damage, 185. Oh, wow. Oh, hold on. The big reason a lot of the regulars gave when talking about why Spiral Knights slowly died out was the grind wall that all the new players would eventually hit. Obviously, I didn't get that far and it would probably take over 10 hours to get anywhere near that point and I actually enjoyed the easy missions I was put through. But that and the fact that the game hasn't been updated in over 5 years is probably why the community is as small as it is. If you haven't played Spiral Knights in a while and you used to be a regular player, I'd love to hear why you left it behind. And in case you were wondering whether the game is still alive, well, to a certain degree, it definitely is. This is Tactical Ops Assault on Terror, an FPS game released as an Unreal Tournament mod in 1999, where it gained a decent amount of popularity. Like a lot of these games, it became a standalone title not long after and kept that same community for a while, with a big peak in popularity during the early 2000s. The Reddit for the game is long dead, and the last post is over a year old, but the servers still have some players, although not too many. The server I joined was called Xmas Fun Massacre. You can tell this game's a little bit old. Is that the Grinch? Holy f***. Every year the regulars on TO celebrate Christmas by playing this server with exclusively Christmas maps and skins, like this beautiful tree jumper. I found that shooting is honestly pretty similar to Counter-Strike, especially with no aiming down sights. Woo! Wait, am I player one? Who's player one? Oh, I did get a kill. I also found a pro player, or at least someone that had been playing the game for a while because they had 53 kills and nine deaths by the end of the first game. While I managed to get myself one kill. Why are you heating in 20 old years game? 53 kills and nine deaths. Tanaka was clearly very good at the game. So good, someone actually thought they were cheating. But there's literally a video on the official Tactical Ops TV YouTube channel from just a few days ago, with Tanaka literally showing off the new P90 weapon on the same server that I just played, and using the same weapon that he killed me with a good 10 times. Alright, yep, that's Tanaka. After digging a little deeper, I also found numerous older videos from over four years ago, all of Tanaka playing on that official YouTube channel. Later on, I actually managed to ask Tanaka how long they've played the game for, and he said he's been playing since 2001, just two years after its original release. Since 2001. Holy f Who wants to be a millionaire? What the bro? It's honestly f amazing that this game still has servers, let alone players, considering how old it is. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see this game still around 10 years from now. Northern Darkness pick up, picking up the frags and the documents. 2 2 3 on the board. Jack is going to move them away the quick way as he makes his way over that bridge. He's got ASD and Amore left to back him up. GG called. Oh, Jack falls down the side. I do not believe it. He falls and gets killed to his death as he hops his way over the bridge. And when it is not your day, it is not your day.
Over the years, the internet has slowly filled up with thousands upon thousands of FPS games, but the large majority don't last longer than a few years. Wolfenstein Enemy Territory has already lasted 20 years, and it's still going strong in 2023, having just launched on Steam. My name is Sebastian, also better known as Sapes. I'm the event manager of this LAN tournament. We are celebrating 20 years of Wolfenstein Enemy Territory. Since it's a game that focuses on teamwork, it gets people to like work with each other and it creates like really tight bonds and friendships, even if it's just over the internet and Flash Damage like really succeeded in outlining that. Originally, Enemy Territory was an expansion pack for the famous Return to Castle Wolfenstein game, but due to various development reasons, it became a standalone multiplayer game. The team of developers that took on this project were Splash Damage a pretty famous modding crew that shaped the whole scene and were honestly pretty well known for being one of the best map builders around. For ET's entire history, the maps were one of the biggest talking points, for both negative and positive reasons. For the most part, people loved them, and the different paths and layouts were nothing like any other game, but there were people that argued some choke points were too extreme and would just make some games fall flat, which was kind of true. The first map I played was odd, but the worst part was my PC having a literal heart attack at the sight of any player movement or bullets. I don't really know what I'm doing. Alright, I'm jumping out, f*** this. Okay, I'm on a solid 2 FPS. Once my PC eventually insulated the whole house in heat, I went to a different server where I discovered most of the servers were actually filled with bots. When you look at the server list, you think the lobbies are thriving, but the real number of players is much less. There were around 30 people online when I was playing, around peak times, and the second server I joined was a little calmer, with just a few other real players. It was here I finally got the feel of the guns, and got myself a couple kills. I'm actually not doing too bad, all things considered. Have that door. That might have been a bot, but I don't really care. Oh, there's a cave. Interesting. Qualin. That's a bot. Nundak, that's also a bot. Apart from the occasional rocket from left field, I had a pretty good time boosting my ego against bots, and we eventually won. I then went on one of the most popular ET servers in the world, where there's zero bots, and the lobby was pretty much full, but this time on a better map. I'll sit right here, I think. Nope, maybe I won't. <sighs> yes, thank you, thank you. I spent most of that lobby and most of the entire day respawning or getting revived. It really doesn't surprise me how long this game's lasted. And looking at older ET videos, especially the competitive side, it's fascinating. Down by cockpit, dealing with the MP40 and Keering, where are those parts? Those parts are very sneaky move tried to be put in there as uh, they tried to push in towards that uh, commando, towards the spawn area. I spoke to a few people about ET, people who are either still regulars or used to play it, and a common mention were the clans that used to dominate Wolfenstein. With teamwork being such a big factor and maps having so much depth, any kind of teamwork or knowing what the guys on your team are going to do helps a lot. There's so much to ET that I didn't cover, so I'll link some videos below that go into more detail. And of course, all the community discords for every single game in this video, in case you want to get back into it, or you want to try them out for the first time. Remember, play War Thunder now for free on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation using my link to get your massive bonus pack. And again, thank you so much to War Thunder for sponsoring today's video. Remember, all these games were recommended by you guys over on Twitter and in my Discord, so if you want to suggest something, those are the best places to do it. And I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for everything this year, it's been insane. Best year of my life by far, and I hope we can make 2024 even better. You're all f***ing legends, thank you.